Our next speaker is Evelyn A. Young. She's a research scientist at Dow, where her primary focus is in polyolefins catalysis. Evelyn's a world traveler, having been born in Hong Kong and then grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and, and now she's in Houston, Texas. She earned her PhD at Northwestern, working with uh, Chad Merkin. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Craig, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Evelyn O. Young. I'm a research scientist at Dow in uh, the Packaging and Specialty Plastics R&D organization, and I'm a chemist working in the field of catalysis. And so today I'll talk to you a little bit about my work developing catalysts for high-performance sustainable polymers. So a little bit about myself. Uh, as Craig mentioned, I was born in Hong Kong, and I grew up in New York City. And it was in uh, high school in New York that I started to develop an interest in math and science. But I went to a public high school with more than 4,000 students. And you can imagine uh, it's a little bit hard to kind of find your way. And so for my undergrad, I went to Amherst College, which is a primarily undergraduate research institution. And that was really where I got the mentorship I needed to really find my way. And so my general chemistry professor uh, that uh, summer after my freshman year gave me the opportunity to work in her lab. And that was my first experience uh, working in a lab doing a project on polymer chemistry. And it was really interesting to me. I decided to continue pursuing research and so spent the next couple summers as well as different semesters working in different labs through, for example, REU programs. And then decided to go to graduate school. And I went to graduate school at Northwestern University. Got my PhD in the lab of Professor Chad Merkin uh, working in the area of DNA-directed nanoparticle assembly. And so this work was very fundamental in nature, and towards the end of my PhD, I started to think about what, can, what kind of applications can we develop with these types of fundamental materials. And the area that I started thinking about a little bit was catalysis. And so when I joined Dow in 2015, I joined in the core R&D division, and I had the opportunity to start working on catalyst projects. So first looking at catalysts for polyolefins as well as for uh, silicones. And then also having the opportunity to work in the area of process chemistry. And so how do we translate developing catalysts initially in the lab and then scaling them up so that we can uh, think about working with them on a pilot plant scale and then also a manufacturing scale. And then uh, after a core R&D, I moved into my current role in the business R&D group within packaging and specialty plastics where my focus is on polyolefin catalyst discovery, scale up, and implementation. Um, and then in the last couple years with a, a focus also on mechanical and, and chemical recycling as well. And so before I move on, I really want to just acknowledge everyone kind of along the way, but the uh, mentors and colleagues that I've had, even going back all the way to high school, my math and science teachers for piquing my interest, uh, to my chemistry professors at, at Amherst, of course my graduate school advisor at Northwestern Chad, and then my, uh, my current colleagues and, and mentors at, at Dow. It's been uh, really quite a privilege to work with a really talented group. And a lot has changed over the years, but I will say a lot has also stayed the same. And so right now, that picture on the far right is a picture of me in, in my uh, working up a, a reaction in my fume hood at Dow, um, doing chemistry that's, that's pretty similar to, to what I did uh, as a freshman, uh, as an undergrad, when I was first starting to learn how, how, to, how to do research in a lab. And so, uh, as a chemist, I get the opportunity at Dow to look at a, a number of different chemistries, uh, and that's part of the exciting part of my day-to-day, -day is I, I work with other really talented chemists and chemical engineers, uh, looking at how we can solve problems to, uh, and, and um, uh, uh, develop products that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. So, my current role is in, in the polyolefins business, and so we look at how we can turn ethylene into polyolefins that can be used for, example, food packaging, health and hygiene applications, automotive applications, um, uh, as well as, for example, uh, polyethylene pipe and other durable infrastructure goods. Um, another, a number of other Dow businesses are listed here, silicones, polyurethanes, acrylate chemistry as part of the coatings business, as well as alkoxylation chemistries as part of industrial solutions. All of these different chemistries goes towards uh, products that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. So this could be health um, and hygiene, this can be surfactants uh, used for home and personal care products, um, uh, agricultural products, uh, ho uh, household paints, uh, as well as industrial coatings. But really kind of at the core of the research that I do is, is this following reaction. I develop catalysts so that we can turn ethylene and a comonomer, so for example, uh, one hexene or one octene, into a polyolefin material. 
And while these catalysts have been around uh, on an industrial scale for 50, 60 plus years, there's still a lot of innovation that's taking place now. And particularly in the area of sustainability, where the catalyst really plays an important role. So for example, how do we des design polymers that are more durable so that the product that we're developing can last for years and decades rather than having to be thrown away after just a couple uses? Another big trend is in materials replacements and making kind of mono materials. And so I think it was mentioned earlier that a lot of the packaging that we use in our day to day consists of a lot of disparate type of polymers that are often difficult to recycle. And so what this requires us to do is to be able to develop catalysts that now impart um, properties to your polyolefins that we typically associate with different types of polymers, such as um, polyamides um, or EVOH, for example. And now all of a sudden you have an article of a monomaterial that it's a little bit easier to recycle um, than, than one that contains mixed materials. In addition to these catalytic approaches, I list a couple others here, kind of just schematically. Uh, one of the areas in the top arrow here is and the area of reversible cross-linking. So oftentimes you want to be able to cross-link polymers in order to impart new performance attributes such as increased mechanical strength. Um, however, one of the disadvantages of this cross-linking is that it's often permanent. And so what that means from a recyclability standpoint is that once it's cross-linked, it's hard to be able to chop up the polymer again and reuse it for a different application. However, in collaboration with Northwestern University, we're developing thermoreversible cross-linking strategies where, where by now, for example, you have a cross-linked polymer that has the uh, improved mechanical or creep resistance, and then you can apply an external stimulus such as temperature, and now you can break up those cross-links. And once you break up those cross-links, you can reprocess and recycle that material and reuse it for a different application. Another area is the bottom arrow shown here, so a depolymerization catalyst where you do the reverse, where you can take your polyolefin and depolymerize it into lower molecular weight species. Um, and these lower molecular weight species uh, could be interesting on their own right, so for example, in the use of lubricants or waxes, um, but also you can feed those lower molecular weight species back into a cracker and now you have a source of circular feedstocks. Additionally, uh, the arrow pointing to the right here is we, uh, there's an increasing push to incorporate more and more recycled content uh, in the form of PCR, or post-consumer recyclate. Oftentimes this is challenging because the quality of that PCR really varies. Um, and so in order to be able to uh, improve the performance of PCR containing materials, this is really a, 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 um, an area where catalysis can really play a role where now you can develop catalysts that are forming high performance uh, polyolefins such that they can act to boost and compensate for the lack of performance that you're getting from the PCR. And so this is an area where now with the blended material with this boosted resin and the PCR, the application of that blended material can uh, be a lot higher uh, than, for example, the um, PCR by itself, uh, where the applications uh, would really be limited just based on the quality. And oftentimes, in order to do this blending approach, you really need to add compatibilizers because of the mixed uh, materials that often come with varying qualities um, and mixed uh, recyclate streams of your PCR. And this is where catalysis also plays an important role, where, for example, uh, we can do uh, chain shuttling um, polymerization to make block copolymers and also uh, copolymers containing polar constituents, and that will enable you to build compatibilizers to be able to compatibilize um, different uh, material types. And so I'll talk about two case studies specifically in the area of block copolymers. And so, as I mentioned, recycling of dissimilar polymer types is very challenging, and so one example here is this um, food packaging where you have different layers that play different roles, so for example, oxygen and water barrier, and then also uh, another layer that's more responsible for the structural integrity. And so one way that we um, can think about recycling these types of multi-layer films is through the use of compatibilizers via block copolymer synthesis. And so here's one example of a block copolymer synthesis strategy that makes use of coordination uh, polymerization and specifically catalytic chain shuttling polymerization. And so as part of the catalytic chain shuttling process, we form a uh, species, this polyol or polymeryl zinc species, shown uh, schematically in the middle of the slide. From this polymeryl zinc species, you can functionalize it with a functional group that then you can use to grow a non-polyolefin um, uh, material such as an acrylate, and you can form an olefin acrylate dye block. And so 
Chemically, what we can do, for example, is we could take a polymeryl zinc species, react it with this chloromethyl acrylate, and what you have at the end of this reaction is a polyolefin with an acrylate functionality covalently attached at the end. And so what you can do with this new monomer, which is essentially what it is, is you can polymerize your acrylate using your polymerization technique of choice, and at the very end do a single monomer addition with this modified polymeryl acrylate. And as a, a result of this end capping reaction, uh, you can get a uh, acrylate olefin diblock copolymer. And you can characterize and confirm that you've successfully made this polymer uh, through a number of techniques like diffusion NMR and, and GPC, for example. And you can also see it visually. So in, under the transmission electron microscope, you can see that in the case of having the physical blend, uh, all the crystals are really tightly packed together. Whereas when you successfully form a block copolymer, you get exfoliation of the polyethylene crystals, suggesting that you've compatibilized these polar and nonpolar uh, non um, components. And then one more example is we can use a dual catalyst single reactor approach. And so in this case, uh, what we're doing is we have in a single reactor three different monomers. So ethylene, octene, and styrene. And what we're interested in doing is taking two catalysts that have orthogonal reactivity with respect to each other. So what that means is one catalyst is going to polymerize ethylene and octene but ignore styrene completely. And that will make the polyolefin block in this block copolymer. And then the, the second catalyst that's present in the reactor will primarily polymerize ethylene and styrene, um, and that will be responsible for making the, in this case, syndiotactic polystyrene block that's present in this block copolymer. And then in the presence of a chain shuttling agent, those two blocks can be stitched together. And we've shown that we have identified such a catalyst pair, and so a catalyst that is uh, two catalysts which are compatible with each other um, that have this orthogonal catalyst reactivity and you can see here, in the case of uh, when we don't have a chain shuttling agent, when we just have the physical bent, bl blend of the two parts, you have this macro phase separation. Uh, compared to when you have a chain shuttling agent, you can uh, see that micro phase separation. And so this, these are just two case studies uh, showing the importance of catalysis in, in the formation of um, block copolymers as compatibilizers. Um, but as I showed in the previous slide, there's still a, a lot of work to be done in terms of, uh, for example, uh, catalytic approaches to depolymerization, uh, as well as uh, creation of, of uh, or, or synthesis of high performance catalysts that, that will allow us to, for example, create uh, improved performance booster resins for, for PCR. And I think at the heart of that really is, is the catalyst because that will enable us to do this in an economical fashion, uh, industrially on a large scale. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been a, a real privilege. Uh, thank you for um, this opportunity to speak to you. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to meeting uh, everyone um, throughout the session and, and later this week at ACS. So thank you again. question that I had is, when you've got the depolar depolarization accomplished, then you've got this kind of mix of different species. And I was wondering in particular about that, that functionalizing, that linker unit, and, and how you get that back out of the pot, and how you get all the way from depolar depolarization to three useful products again. So those are two different processes. So uh, oftentimes you have a catalyst that can depolymerize. And in terms of separations, this is a big component of the depolymerization uh, catalysis is how do you separate um, all the different components so that maybe one cut can be useful for cracker feed and another cut could be useful for lubricants. Uh, and part of that is in the development of selective catalysts. So you can change the selectivity to favor one cut over another. Uh, that's one big component of it. Um, but then the other is, is really kind of an engineering problem. And that's where I kind of work with my engineering friends because you can develop processes that can selectively distill or fractionate your different cuts and then kind of move them uh, to where they need to go for subsequent um, uh, uh, processes.